Hi. Hello. Welcome to Valsiad Life FM. We did it. <laughs> big respect, big respect, my sister. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Okay. And I'm very happy to have you here. I'm very happy to have this chance to chat with you, to work with you and uh, John and Nan. Really, really happy. And, um, well, let's start and uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what do you think. For example, what, uh, what's the difference uh, for you uh, between uh, Jamaica reggae and uh, UK reggae? Okay, if I was to tell you this, the, the difference in a Simply, what is um, UK reggae is a lot more progressive and um, carries a lot more um, uh, improvisation in it, as opposed to original reggae from Jamaica was very was very basic. And when I say basic, not to say it was simple, but it was very sort of like you know when we used to back the Jamaican art. Artists many, many, many years ago, they used to say, you know, I mean, don't improvise, don't do nothing extra, just do it as it is. And they used to, and that's the way, that was the difference. It was just very straight on the line, you don't improvise. Whereas with UK reggae, we have, we have so much different influence. So even though we have the influence of reggae as our backbone, but we would have listened to rock music, pop music, classical, so many different times. So you find that. And especially if you did musical training here through school, what would happen, you would play different types of music, which obviously came out when you're doing your recording. So we, you know I mean, so the difference is is that we are a lot more progressive and we will improvise more. And um, and obviously when you see us on stage, we would also give that more um, it's just and let call it another energy that we that we do. Okay, yeah, I see. Basically, I think uh, the influence, the working uh, close uh, to all uh, these uh, um, artists in UK music scene can be just uh, positive, uh, I guess, because uh, as, a, as a DJ, as a listener, as a person that loves uh, music, love reggae music, I can say Jamaican go really something that is not uh, absolutely duplicable nowhere. So reggae it's like uh, a kind of uh, uh, trademark for Jamaica, in my opinion. But obviously more, more a musician go influences around the world, more make this music uh, maybe um, sweet, not suitable, because it's suitable every, uh, anyway. Maybe more open to uh, a large uh, range of taste, I would say. Well, yeah, and also, you know, just to add that, if you remember when Bob Marley came out with the Catch a Fire album, yeah. what they did, they added a lot of session musicians on it that played. So you had session musicians from different walks of life that were guest artists on the album, which is what gave it that broader feel. So from the fact that they did a special packaging, which reggae wasn't done in that type of packaging, they added with... You know, I mean, as I say, with a guitar, uh, with, with with a fuzz on it, you know, things that just wasn't normally done in in Jamaica, and you know, I mean, and that played, you know, I mean, somebody like myself, Bob Marley played a lot, a very very large influence on my life. Um, I saw him for the first time when I was 12 years old, and it just changed my life. So, yeah, you know, I mean, I can't take that away, but Bob Marley. You know, he, he did start the first progressive reggae movement. Yeah. Of course, he's a, he's a great uh, personality. He's uh, obviously the, the biggest influence for a, a lot of uh, people I met and I could uh, read uh, getting interested about, uh, you know, the background of the artists I saw playing. Uh, even uh, Chronic, uh, Chronic, uh, that is uh, so young, uh, now he declared to be really influenced by Bob Marley. So yeah, I think it's fantastic um, when, when you were, uh, you know, a kid, basically 12 years old, and seeing uh, Robert Nesta Marley playing uh, emotional. <laughs> I guess. Well, you know, we, you know, we did a tour with um, Peter Tosh, and 
everywhere we, you know, I mean, everywhere we've been, um, even places where we were the second reggae band to perform there, Bob Marley was the first. So he opened so much doors. He worked very hard. And when people talk about reggae music, reggae music is not a genre, and people tend to like to put it in a box. Reggae music is like a coach for where I. Because anybody who's involved in reggae music, it becomes part of their life. It becomes a lifestyle. So when I talk about reggae music, it's a lifestyle, it's a culture. And you know what I mean? Anywhere in the world you go, you can see who's been touched or who's part of the reggae music culture because they it carries its own identity. So it's it's far more than just a genre of music. It's a lifestyle, it's a culture. Yeah, I'm agree. I agree with it, and I could live uh, myself uh, as an Italian, and honestly, it influenced a lot my life. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, happy always <laughs> for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, Anthony, um, I want to ask you something because a few time ago I was reading uh, an article about uh, a problem uh, in, uh, in reggae music uh, because a lot of artists uh, um, realize that uh, uh, reggae music is played everywhere, so. A lot of uh, bands all over the world uh, doing uh, uh, covers, but the most part of the time uh, there is nothing back for those uh, who created it, you know? So, so these people basically saying, I want that reggae music become a product of Jamaica. If you use uh, or if you are inspired by my music, I want to be obviously, uh, or, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. as, as generally uh, paid, maybe in terms of uh, royalties, I guess. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean, they want it to, to, to be a trademark. Right. right. Well, okay. okay, so, you know, when we talk about artists, the original musicians of Jamaica being credited, we know that there have been a lot of, over the years, publishing and the rights, who, who own the rights, has been documented in most of the publishing agencies. But, as you know, with years going past and with things duplicating, you know, I mean, many people will record my record, um, and half of the time I won't get paid for it. Yeah. But there is not a lot you can actually do. Piracy, people's been pirating music for years, and they're not going to stop now. But the, way, the, the only time I have a problem is when we are no longer able to perform our music live. And if that part is taken away, then that's when, then that's when we really do lose out. Because, you know I mean, you, if we go to the, the, you know, if we go back to say Bob Marley, for example, what made Bob Marley so popular, and I can actually claim the same for myself, is because people, one person would have bought that album and they would have put it on 10, 20, 30 cassettes and shared it amongst people. And then with people listening to those cassettes, when they heard that there was going to be a live performance, they would turn up. For example, I spoke to someone in Brazil and he said Black Slate helped him to speak English because somebody gave him a cassette and that was his foundation to, to the English language. So when yeah. you somebody say something like that, and as far as he's saying, I can't wait to see the band. So, you know I mean? There's nothing you can do about piracy, um, you know what I mean, with all the will in the world. So I, I, I try not to, to get hung up about it because it's outside of my, you know I mean? It's outside of my control. If somebody listening to my music one way or the other and it changes their life, then it's done the job. It's a talent, it's a God bless talent that I've received. And, you know what I mean? God blesses you in many different ways. So if my music is blessed in somebody one way, and um, their receiver, I know that my blessing will come from somewhere else. So that's, that's my view. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point of view. And uh, yeah, I, I think, uh we can't do too much, uh, obviously, to stop it, but it's good that uh, reggae got so popular. And uh, are you happy 
with the, with, with the way Jamaican music uh, is, uh, is uh, going. I mean, uh, some people say that uh, there's too much swearing, there's too much violence, that a, a bit, uh, you know, it, it goes a little bit odd in, in, some, uh, in some point. Some well, people criticize it. Well, well let, me, let, me, let me, I can answer that question very well, actually. You know, from ever since, from from the from the beginning of reggae music, there was always different types of reggae music. There was always culture, there was spiritual, and there was slackness, and you know there was always the sound boy type music. Now language has changed, and some people have gone back to front with language where they're now using the explicit languages in records. But the reality is, it's what you listen to. Now, if you want to listen today, if you want to listen to culture, reggae, Jamaican culture, reggae, with no slackness, it's there to listen to. If you want to listen to the violence and gunman tuning, it's there to listen to. Whatever type of reggae music you want, it's, there, it's your choice. Now, if the DJs now are not giving people the choice, then that's when we have a problem. If the people who's exploiting the music is saying, oh, this is the only type of reggae music we're going to play, so be the case. But the reality is, when you look at all the festivals, the reggae festivals worldwide, they are still very much culture-based. You don't find them full of slackness, you don't find them full of violence or anything like that. Anywhere in the world you go and listen to reggae music, the foundation of it is very, very spiritual, very, very cultural. So, you know, I mean, when people talk about it's getting too violent out of Jamaica, no, that's just a very, very small fraction of that music. And it's just, it, you know, it's like fashion. One minute it's fashion, the next minute it will change. It, 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 it's, it, it'll, it'll evolve again. You know, I mean, all right, it's, it's like you mentioned Chronix. Now, that's a very talented young man. And he's a very article young man when he talks. I saw him perform the other day and I was impressed. As a big man watching a youth on stage, he and and the audience he had, I would say ninety percent of the audience was over thirty-five. And he captivated those people with his music. So if a young man is coming out of Jamaica performing like that what, what they've, they've not you know he didn't have his trousers hanging off he he looked extremely smart on stage and the words that came out of his mouth was so articulate and his voice is amazing so if you're talking about what's happening with reggae music then well let's talk about <laughs> chronic yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's true, that's true. It's great, it's great. So, you know what I mean, we don't have a, you know what I mean, so what I'm basically saying is, you know, if people say, oh, too much swearing, too much like, yeah, it, what, there was a lot of that, but it's changed again. Yeah. I think so, I can see it. You can embrace this, uh, this atmosphere, this hair, like, uh, or any view. There, there's more need of uh, positive contents. People need really positive vibe since uh, from morning uh, to night, and the music is changing a little bit about it. I can see it, yeah. Okay, Anthony. So let's go to the next question. Who is the who's on the band now beside you, Chris uh, and uh, Desmond? Well, it's, it's amazing you should ask that question because just this morning I had a conversation with Elroy and um, it looks like Elroy would be, um, will also be playing bass with the band. So we're almost having the original lineup with some additional musicians and some additional singers. So when you say Black Slate, it's actually still very much um, Black Slate. We, you know, we've done a few albums where we've had additional singers, like we've had um, Jesse Braid, um, we've got LJ, we had Delroy Pinnock singing for us as well. Um, 
and also on the next album the new album to be released we've got LOI singing tracks off of that album as well so Black Slate is very much in its original form with extras that's great so yeah it's uh, upcoming um, uh, release uh, uh, on 15 as well I know about uh, this upcoming uh, album what can you tell me about it? Well, this album represents a lot of what's going on in the UK, well, in the world now, really. Um, it's, it's, you know, I mean, there's a few love songs and it, but it's very cultural. It's about, I suppose, our state of mind and how we're thinking, um, how we're feeling. And, you know, if you were, to, you know, just like how you would listen to some of the older Black State tracks, it's you know you, you, you like you could say it's a current newspaper to what's going on but it's one of those things that keeps on happening on a a year a decade to decade basis so you find that even though things are changing things are very much the same and you know and you know if we don't keep on singing about it performing and talking about things well we will never have change so this album represents Again, I've, you know, you've you got our root style in it, and um, and it's life. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's, it's, even though we're using modern technology now, but with modern technology, we're still giving you that live feeling, that live vibe. And um, that's, you know, that's what this album's about. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> okay. Well, that's great. I'm looking forward to it because, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, listening the old uh, tracks, Black Slate tracks, I'm really curious to see what the reunion is giving us. <coughs> so basically, <coughs> Black Slate broke up 30 years ago. And what you, Chris and Desmond, been doing during this time? Well, when when what really happened with black when did our world tour which ended towards the in call it mid 80s we recognize that music is something that we do because we love it and um and we saw difficulties you know i mean as you get you know when you're 16 17 18 things you know what i mean responsibilities don't really come into your mind but once you start getting into your late 20s early 30s <laughs> life responsibilities takes a hold of you and um and we always said we always want to play music because we love it not because we have to not because it's a job because that then changes the reason why you go on the road that changes the reason why you talk to people and um and whereas some of us actually went into the music industry, some of us actually continued producing. Um, but basically, we always knew we were going to go back on the road when we, when we felt that the time was right. So with three years of planning, we've got to this point to say, right, here we go. We're going to hit the road. We've got work to do. Yeah, that's it. when music call you, you just uh, answer, and this is uh, the right time uh, for you and the right time for the people to listen uh, what you what you have for them. And uh, uh, tell me about uh, Black Slate's performance at Miami Reggae Festival last November. Mm -hmm. That was what, what that was the I would say that was like the 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 launch to say whether one we could be accepted by the people two we needed you know you know you can always think you want to do something but you don't know if it's a personal ego thing or you don't know if it's something that's really right for the people and with all the dramas that happened to get us on that stage and with the response that we got from the people we can all say that we are blessed and we've been accepted back into the reggae, the roots of reggae world. 
because how people responded to us um how people heard us they said we sounded fresh we sounded you know what i mean and as i say our our music is a talent that is a blessing that we've had so you find that we've always looked at black slate carrying a message you know you know when you think of the name black slate it has two meanings slate is something that we used to write on many moons ago which was a form of education but in the modern world black slate is also a cable a communication cable so we've always said that if we don't have a message to go out in the world then it's time not to do it and we find that it's time now for us to continue to walk with our message you know what i mean when you listen to some of our, our older songs and you think of what's happening today they are still very much come um very much what's happening today so no the reggae music festival was definitely um a door opener for us to know that yeah we are ready for the road again yes great so we have to be ready for more live performances if any of yeah we see as we as we you know i mean anyone who we talk we say look music we do because we love so we don't have to be on a big stage we don't have to be in the big you know we are gonna we are back on the road to play music to who wants to listen to us so if it's the small club where we're gonna play and perform to those those hundreds 200 people want to listen to us then we're gonna go there and if it's the place where there's 10,000 people want to hear us we're gonna go there because we're doing the work that we will be recording so we're on the road to carry a message we're not on the, we're on the road because we have a job to do yeah. okay so what do you oh, 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 uh, beside uh, more live performances and uh, what what do you see in what do you foresee in uh, black slate future well you, 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 i reckon we're going to be touring until we are unable to tour anymore um we're going to be releasing albums um and we're just going to travel the world um where where people want to hear reggae music so i don't see i see our i just see our futures we're on the road just like how when we started i just see the continuation of that journey okay anthony and uh, i'm all there for uh, our question now and uh, just uh, give uh, if you want to give some info about where people can purchase your music and find uh, info about black slate being updated about your activity okay so we have our website which is www.blackslateofficial.co.uk and we also have our press agent which is entertainment um, with Nan and Johan so they cover all our worldwide um, cover you know they they put out our press releases they you know they do all our PR work and um, so between their website and all the the, 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 the normal um, you know the Facebook and things like that all that you want to know about like so will always be updated on those forums but our official site is blackslateofficial.co.uk Okay, thank you and uh, thank you for, to be here, thank you to wait, uh, sorry for last Sunday and uh, I'm gonna edit it uh, and uh, post it on uh, every channel, every platform in the next uh, couple of days Okay and uh, I look forward one day to have you here in the studio, maybe when you're gonna be in London well i'll be looking forward to that well i'm hearing that i'll be looking forward well, we're here so okay um that is easily you know i mean that's easily to put together so um maybe when we have the physical copy of the album we'll come into the studio and we'll actually do um 
another interview and we can actually feature the album. Yeah, that's great. So that would be great. Okay. okay. Well, then, 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 say, consider it that it'll happen. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna, let's keep in touch. I'm gonna be in touch anyway with uh, Nan and John. Alright. Okay. Alright, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Leslie. Big, big pleasure, trust me, really. No respect. Have a good night. Alright, same to you. Take care. Bye. Bye.